Hello class, so what I'm going to do now is to show an example of how illusion works in a poem, the depth it can add to a poem. And what I'll do is uh, talk about the poem Out Out by Robert Frost. Um, if you see online the poem itself, the title is in quotation marks, which tells you that the title of this poem is a quote of something else. And indeed, what it's a quote of is a soliloquy from the Shakespeare play Macbeth. And it's towards the end of the play in which the world is crumbling around Macbeth. Um, the armies are uh, approaching on the castle. Um, he's about to be destroyed. And he has a soliloquy, which is his inner thoughts um, expressed out loud on stage. Um, basically musing on the pointlessness of life, the arbitrariness, arbitrariness of death. And uh, it goes, um, tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow, creeping this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle, life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Okay, so that's Macbeth, and you heard the out, out, um, brief candle, out, out, your brief life. Life um, is like a poor player, poor actor, strutting and fretting on the stage, and then he's done, and then you never hear from him again, right? So here's Robert Frost's poem, Out, Out. Um, in the context of the Macbeth quote, um, let's see if you can see the relationship and what depth the illusion adds to the, play, to, uh, the Frost poem, rather. Out, out. The bus saw snarled and rattled in the yard, and made dust and dropped stove-length sticks of wood, sweet scented stuff when the breeze drew across it. And from there those that lifted eyes could count five mountain ranges, one behind the other, under the sunset far into Vermont. And the saw snarled and rattled, snarled, snarled and rattled, and it ran light or had a, to bear a load, and nothing happened. The day was all but done. Call it a day, I wish they might have said, to please the boy by giving him a half hour that a boy counts so much when saved from work. His sister stood, be, stood beside them in the apron, in her apron, to tell them supper. At the word, the saw, as if to prove saws knew what supper meant, leaped out at the boy's hand, or seemed to leap. He must have given the hand. However it was, neither refused the meeting. But the hand... The boy's first outcry was a rueful laugh as he swung towards him, holding up the hand, half an appeal, but half as if to keep the life from spilling. Then the boy saw all, doing a man's work, though a child at heart. He saw all spoiled. Don't let him cut my hand off. The doctor, when he comes, don't let him cut, sister. So, but the hand was gone already. The doctor put him in the dark of ether. He lay and puffed his lips out with his breath, and then the watcher at his pul pulse took fright. No one believed. They listened at his heart. Little, less, nothing. And that ended it. No more to build on there. And they, since they were not the one, not the one dead, turned to their affairs. Um, the poem about a, a boy you know, cutting wood with a, uh, with a chainsaw, um, ends up cutting himself severely and bleeds to death. Um, the title Out Out, again, is Macbeth's, um, an allusion to Macbeth's reflection on um, the brevity of life, um, how life is ultimately meaningless because a meaningless death like this can happen at any time. You know, so that's, uh, that is, I think, an example of how illusion works um, you know, to give an, a depth to the poem that might not have been quite as strong otherwise.